Welcome, Chief Rabbi and Robertson Mervs. And let me take this opportunity to acknowledge the co-hosts of the Zionist Federation. Tonight, Sam Tataka, the President of the Zionist Council of Victoria. We usually can't, usually can't see you. Perhaps you could stand. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Jennifer Huppert, the President of the Jewish Community. You are married. <laughs> we, we, okay, just admit to it. President of the Jewish Community Council of Victoria and representing the UIA Victoria, Leon Jacobs, and Mara Daatra, Chief Minister of the Caulfield Hebrew Congregation, Rabbi Ganendi, and the Board of Hebrew Congregation, we'd like to thank for enabling us to hold the event here. We need to ensure that the best of our community lack, are not those, because as Yates put it, he said, the best lack all conviction and the worst are filled with passionate intensity. But it is the best, I say, who have to strive strenuously and seriously for the balanced harmony of our path, of the path that is represented by modern orthodoxy. And they also need to be filled with a sense of obdurate, but not an inflexible, not that inflexible extremism intensity of the extremists but by the passionate conviction, the passionate conviction that this path, that the path of moderation, that the path of moderation, that the Shvil Hazahav, that the path of modern orthodoxy is relevant and vital to Melbourne, to our Jewish community as it is across the world. And I welcome you therefore, Rabbi Mervis, on behalf of our community to our vital city of Melbourne, to our energetic community of Caulfield. Welcome, Shalom Aleichem. In all respects, and by all reports, and from my own experience last night, Chief Rabbi, having heard you speak at the Beit Midrash dinner, you have very much to offer to your office and to the English-speaking world as you continue to spread your Torah to us all. And tonight is a perfect opportunity for you to introduce that Torah to this community. I welcome you to the podium. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much to all those who provided introductions for your very kind words. It's brilliant for Valerie and for me to be here in your midst, within the heart of this very warm, welcoming, vibrant, major Jewish home uh, of Yiddishkeit within our world. And tonight I would like to thank you for allowing me to share some thoughts on contemporary Israel, the centrality of Israel in our lives, and also modern Judaism and what is happening within our communities, the connection between Israel and our communities in the diaspora, and how I perceive the way forward to be. But let me start off with the center of our universe, which is Yerushalayim Ir HaKodesh. Because it's the center of our universe, and also because of the tragic event which took place last week, and uh, a week might pass, two weeks might pass, more time might pass, but that event, together with other tragic events, will continue to occupy our minds, our thoughts, and our prayers. You know, Yerushalayim is our capital city. It's our eternal capital city. But it is a unique capital city. Why do I say that? When a capital city is chosen, there need to be a number of preconditions. First of all, it needs to be in an area that is easy to frequent for people to reach that spot. Yerushalayim is definitely not in such an area. It's up in the hills and the mountains. In ancient times, the uh, King's Highway went from what is currently Saudi Arabia up to Damascus, to the east of Jerusalem. The Way of the Sea, as it was called, went from Egypt up to Lebanon. You would only arrive at Yerushalayim if you fablonzed for some reason, lost your way, and came uh, to that particular area. Yerushalayim is highly inaccessible. Even today, it's not easy to reach there. And then as well, a capital city needs to be a place which has a natural source of water. That is why many cities which serve as capitals are by the sea, or at least on a navigable river, so that people would have the opportunity to travel by water to the city, and of course, in order that the inhabitants of the city should have water to drink. But that's not the case with Yerushalayim. 
Not a single river flows through the city. And historically, it has been a continuous challenge to provide water for the city. And so you would have probably visited the Meishilach in the Silwan Valley. You would have discovered how Hezekiah the king dug a tunnel in order to transport water from the Gush Etzion area through to Yerushalayim. Always a major challenge. So why, therefore, is Jerusalem our capital? The Pasuk says, Ki vachar Hashem betzion iva lemoshav lo. Because God has chosen Zion as the place for his habitation. Yerushalayim was chosen by none other than HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to be a place through which he would manifest his presence, his Kedusha, more than any other place on earth. That is why Yerushalayim is the center of our universe. And that is why when we daven, we daven to Yerushalayim and through Yerushalayim. The entire Jewish world is united in prayer because all of our shuls and wherever we are, even as individuals, we are facing Zion. And our sages tell us that when it comes to our dwelling in our own country, we go through stages. We go through the stage of Asek, where there is strife between ourselves and other local residents. From there we go on to Sitna, from the root Satan. There are those who seek to destroy us within our own land, but we should never despair, because after that we will come to Rechovot, where there will be peace in the land. And I believe that herein lies an enormous amount of chizuk, of encouragement for us in our time, because there are those living in our very own land who are seeking to expel us from the land which is ours, Philistine style. We have endured Asek and Sitna. We should never give up hope to yearn for peace, to pray for peace, to strive for peace, if and when appropriate and necessary and proper to make concessions for peace so that one day we will indeed reach the stage of Rechovot, having spaciousness, peace and tranquility in our land. Our tradition demands us to believe that that indeed will come about. We have an obsession with the past. If you'll look to the reasons given for our key mitzvot, Zecher Litziat Mitzrayim, to remember the Exodus from Egypt. Zecher Lamasev Rishit, you couldn't go back further than that to remember the creation of the world. We dig deeply into our origins because we know that once we know where we're coming from, we will know where we are going to. It's with this in mind that as Chief Rabbi, I have identified three areas through which I will seek to lead my communities. Based on the Mishnah in Pirkei Avot, they are Torah, Avodah, and Gemilut Chasadim. Torah stands for education. It must be our top priority, formal and informal education for all interest groups and people. Secondly, Avodah, which literally means the service of God through what we carry out in our synagogues, the building of strong communities to transform houses of prayer into powerhouses of Jewish religious, educational, social and cultural excellence, to take communities which are on the launch pad and to enable them to have liftoff through outstanding rabbinic inspirational leaders in partnership with lay leadership. And it's only through that partnership, outstanding lay leadership together with rabbinic leadership, that we as communities, both at local and at central a city level, a national level, can actually thrive and move forward. And finally, Gemilot Chasadim, acts of loving kindness. In a nutshell, what we call Tikkun Olam. That's a central Jewish concept. I want to reclaim Tikkun Olam, to be part of our orthodox way of life. Because it is so critically important for us to guarantee that our acts of loving kindness and generosity and consideration extend beyond the confines of our communities because we respect the fact that every single human being is created in the image of God and therefore we are here to make a positive impact on our entire environment. There was a time when you had classical anti-Semitism. It existed primarily within far-right movements, in some ways influenced by the church, and that produced the evils of the Shoah in many ways. But since that time, in addition to such anti-Semitism still existing, we have radical Islam with uh, its hatred of those who are considered to be the infidels, including the Jews. And also, we have neo-Nazis 
on the increase on the continent. And also we have those who are liberally minded, who are critical of Israel, and through their anti-Zionism are expressing anti-Semitism. Now, I strongly believe that not every anti-Zionist is an anti-Semite. However, many are, and having anti-Zionism provides a context within which anti-Semitism can thrive, a context within which people can be comfortable to express their anti-Semitic sentiments and to engage in anti-Semitic actions. So therefore, when attacks occur against Jewish people or Jewish buildings, organizations and interests, we actually don't know in the first instance where it's coming from. And in addition to all that, it could just simply be xenophobia, hatred of the other. So we've got our work cut out for ourselves today. We exist today in a world context in which contemporary Israel has a central role in our lives at a practical level and also within a religious context because we see the phenomenon of the state of Israel as at Chalta de Geula. This is a very significant moment in our history which, please God, will leave ultimately to the redemption of the world. And together with that, we're blessed to have thriving Jewish communities around the world with numerous challenges and hopefully through Torah, Avodah, and Gmilut Chasadim, through highlighting and prioritizing education, through building strong Jewish community centers, and through engaging in acts of chesed, to be a mensch, to express our hearts in a positive way and reach out to all others, we can reach the highest levels of Jewish uh, expression, and ultimately, we can continue to enable communities such as this to grow and to develop for the sake of a positive and wonderful future. And it's my honour to give the vote of thanks to Chief Rabbi Mervis today. Um, it has been a fascinating evening listening to you talk. You've spoken on a wide range of subjects about both contemporary Israel and modern Judaism. And I think the message that you've given us, us is a message of hope, a message that by looking at the story of Yitzhak, we have a hope that there will be peace in Medinat Israel in our time, and we all pray for that. And in your story, your, what you've told us about the current situation in UK, in Europe, although of course there have been some difficult times and there have been difficult relations with other faith groups, you've also given a message of hope that dialogue can work and that dialogue with both the Christian community and the Muslim community does can have positive outcomes. So I'd like to thank you very much for your presentation this evening. I'd like to ask everyone to join me in the usual manner in showing our appreciation. <laughs>